Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here. Here once again is my garage shop. And in this video, we're going to talk about greasing the upper wheel on a Shopsmith bandsaw. Now, you might have the question, how often do I need to do this maintenance? And I don't know the answer to this. I really don't. But what I will tell you is if you've owned your bandsaw for a couple years and you haven't greased it, it's time to grease it. <laughs> The, uh, the upper wheel has a couple needle bearings. Um, needle bearings are basically roller bearings, not ball bearings. They're, they're little, little steel uh, cylinders, and they're designed for forces, in this case, forces that are pulling down. Uh, we really don't have a lot of forward and backward lateral force on the bearings. And so uh, needle bearings work great for this. However, they're not shielded. They're not sealed for life bearings, and they're exposed to sawdust and such in here. So from time to time, we need to pull this off and add grease. You may even need to remove the old grease. So this video is, is all about that. Now, there's a couple ways that these are retained. And just for my own fun, I decided not to pull the cover off and check yet. But uh, that's the first order of business. We'll pull the cover off and... Ah, okay, so it's possible that uh, that this is a snap ring that needs a pair of snap ring pliers. Um, these are the type of pliers that, that if you don't use these frequently, uh, you you can pick these up from uh, from Harbor Freight, and uh, you would put this into the two holes and stretch just ever so slightly, just enough to pop it off. Your upper wheel may be held in place by a little spiral ring. Um, what you have to do is find the end of that ring and get your uh, a very small screwdriver or pocket knife underneath it and pry on it. This one is held in place with an E-clip. This is pretty simple um, as long as you don't park your Mark V in front of your toolbox. So, hold on a second. Got to find a flat blade screwdriver. Here we go. So, oh, first we got to take the tension off and take that blade completely off. If, you, uh, if you're wondering how much practice I do <laughs> uh, for these videos, not, not a whole lot, to be honest with you. So let's pull the blade off. Put that aside. Oh, if you happen to have this aluminum table and you can't get your blade off, um, it, it may be because you aren't aware that you have an extension here. Um, if you loosen the knobs underneath the edge of the table, that extension will pull out. Maybe you have that extension, maybe you don't, but that rod was right in the way of that exiting. Uh, bonus. A, a couple weeks ago, it became all the rage on YouTube for people to show you how they fold their bandsaw blades. Um, I typically don't bother folding mine. Once I've taken them out of the package, I like to store them in this position in my shop. I just bought an inexpensive um, uh, hose reel, just the, the half circle hose, not even a reel, hose holder that you would screw on the outside of your house. And I have that mounted to the wall and I just hang these on there. Yes, I could have made something, but I think I paid $2 for that little plastic doohickey. But if you, if you feel like you need to do this, or this is a skill you need to master, what I do is, is I just kind of hold this a little bit like a peanut, pushing the sides in. I'll, I'll turn my, my left hand backwards so all of my fingers are pointing the same way. And then I'm going to rotate this hand towards me and this thumb towards me, okay? So they're moving in opposite directions. And if you hold the blade, in this case, so the, the teeth are facing that way, and I'm, I'm maintaining that, that uh, uh, these teeth are gonna wind up facing me. Anyway, it's funny, it's been a long time since I've shown this, but uh, just rotate this around and then keep rotating until those three loops appear. And then uh, you can kind of center it like that. And if you want to put these in a drawer or hang them on something, I just find that, that there's no advantage to this. And uh, I would rather just keep it, keep it open. Um, but we can gently allow that to pop open like this. 
This is a very small blade, a 5 8 inch blade. You got to be a little more careful with because there's a lot of spring tension in it. But I just I'll store it just like this. I'm not going to show you <laughs> where that is. All right, so now we've got everything off of here. Um, we can lower this out of the way to give us full access. And uh, what I'm going to do is take that E-clip, put my screwdriver into one of the openings, and just pull it, pry it away from that shaft. Let's just pop it back on. This is also usually where it ends up flying across the room. Let's push it down. We'll get you a better, a better view of that. We'll take that E-clip that's on here, if you happen to have an E-clip. I'm going to face it towards the wall, and my thumb is going to go here to help retain it so it doesn't fly across the room. I'm going to pick one of the openings, stick my screwdriver in, and just pull it, in this case, to the left until it snaps off. We're going to put that in a magnetic tray to hold it so it doesn't disappear. Then there is a fiber washer. This washer is there to uh, act as a little bit of a dust shield since these are not sealed bearings. And then at that point, this wheel should slide right off as it does. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and remember to clean this shaft off. Um, take a moment to also check it for wear. And I'm just, at this point, using a paper towel. You might want to add a little WD-40 to really degrease that. In case you're wondering, I have been using the WD-40 degreaser for all of this degreasing. So it's not exactly the same WD-40 that we grew up with, but um, it has more solvents in it. There we go. Looks good. So let's look inside of this wheel now. What you've got is, as I mentioned, needle bearings here. And if you look on through that hole, you can see there is another needle bearing over here. So a pair of needle bearings. Um, at this point, because this is a used bandsaw, I have no idea what's going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that grease. And I'm going to do this with the bearings mounted right here on the wheel. I'm just going to spray this, saturate it with the, uh, the degreaser, and then use a paper towel rolled around inside that to, uh, to roll those needle bearings around. This isn't an exact science. Now, now's a good time to go ahead and get rid of all that loose dust that's on the wheel. It's just going to fall off and uh, potentially get mixed in with our fresh grease. So let's get rid of it. Use any stiff brush that you have for this job. Also, depending upon when your bandsaw wheel was made, uh, you may find that you have all of these little dimples drilled into the back side of the wheel. And that was done to balance the wheel. Some of them, they machined away from the edge of this material. So from the front side, you would notice that, that there's a, it's a little bit thinner here. But uh, this bandsaw was made in the 1980s, and this is the way it was done then. Probably still the way they do this. Now we're going to use that uh, degreaser. And let's just get, get that saturated, and then we'll roll it around with the uh, paper towel. This is that paper towel I told you that Amazon accidentally sent us, and now we buy this stuff religiously. It's a, it's kind of a cloth paper towel, and uh, man, is it good stuff. I'm just uh, now I'm just holding the wad of paper and rolling the bearings over it. Is this going to get rid of all the grease? Uh, no, no, it's not. There's uh, I'm sure there'll be some great comments 
in the comments section here from people who know all about this stuff and who would recommend another method. But this is what I've done for 30 years or so. And uh, it works great. Now, why am I get rid getting rid of all the grease that I can? Um, well, that grease that's in there, as soon as I add fresh grease over it, the uh, solvents in that grease is going to soften up the old grease. And then that old grease is going to start uh, giving me problems because that old grease is uh, packed with dust and, and is pretty well spent. And, and maybe it's worth even saying what grease is. Uh, grease is oil. In, uh, in most cases, it's just mineral oil that is um, suspended in something that's referred to as a soap. Basically, it's, uh, it's a thickener that helps to suspend that oil so that it stays in place. Yes, you could just add oil to this, but that oil is going to work its way out pretty easily over time. And so we're just going to get as much of that old grease out of there as we can. And uh, I think that's going to be fine. Now, let me show you what you don't want to see with a, a upper wheel on a bandsaw. If I put that on here, and right now it doesn't have really any lubrication at all, I can spin that. It's like, wow, that's amazing. That thing will spin forever. We don't want that. We need this to have grease in it, and that grease will offer a bit of resistance. And uh, so when this is properly greased, it shouldn't spin like a fidget spinner. So how do we grease it, and what do we grease it with? This is funny. I got to say, um, I, I went to get the grease that I use, and this grease is some grease that I bought years ago to use on um, a Mixmaster mixer. A little bit of uh, Shopsmith history, if you didn't know this, when Hans Goldschmidt invented the Shopsmith Model 10E, he didn't have a name for it. So he threw a little bit of a party, um, and the cost of admission was you had to submit a, a name for his machine. And the runner-up to the name Shopsmith was the name Mix Mister. So uh, nothing sexist there at all. Anyway, I, I, I researched and I found some grease for our Mix Master mixer. One of the important things to me was it needed to be food grade. So if it, for whatever reason, ever seeped out and got into the food that was being mixed, it wouldn't kill us. And uh, the, the research that I did led me to a grease that I've been using ever since. And that is this Super Lube. Now, what's funny is I went to my shop and I grabbed this. And I'm like, wait a second. That's the stuff that I spray inside the headstock on the worm gear in the quadrant. It is and yet it isn't. They do sell a spray version of this. So basically it's this mixed with some solvents and some aerosol propellants. You can spray it into um, even into our bearing if we wanted to. And then once the solvents evaporate, you're left with a solid grease inside of it. Um, this is not that. This is a, a dry lube that uh, dries very quickly. It doesn't build up a big layer of grease. And so this is what I use in the headstock. That's what I'm going to use in the bandsaw. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, this also, though, does contain the PTFE, the polytetrafluoroethylene. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I figure if I say it fast, it'll sound like I know what I'm saying. <clears throat> and uh, so here's what we're going to do. Oh, I was going to also tell you, <clears throat> I wanted to throw in something controversial. You will, if you research this, you will see comments in the Shopsmith forum, on the Shopsmith Facebook group. You will see people say that you can use pretty much any bearing grease, but whatever you do, don't use white lithium grease. I have a bandsaw at my shop that for 30 years, I've only used white lithium grease. <clears throat> Um, what's wrong with white with lithium grease? Nothing except for the fact that it's incompatible with the grease that Shopsmith uses at the factory. So if you just add grease directly into the bearing and you don't clean it out, 
white lithium grease and the grease that's in there will have a little bit of a battle. And uh, so you don't want to do that. But if you completely remove all the grease, you can use almost any grease, including white lithium grease. The advantage of white lithium grease, which is also a suspended mineral oil, um, that, that white color is an indicator that it's time to replace it. So if you pull that off and it's still white, you're good to go. Over time, it gets darker and darker as it mixes with little bits of metal and sawdust. And so I kind of like white lithium grease. You'll notice that this is, this is kind of cream color, but it won't be that color for long at all. So this isn't quite like white lithium grease. Now, the way that I apply this is I, I take a, a dab of that onto my finger, and then I'm just going to push that into the bearing like this. It's not getting into the bearing, it's just getting into the cavity right now. Let's do the same thing on the back side. And we'll press that in. All right, now I gotta get that deep into the roller bearing. And the way that we do that, so I'm gonna put my thumb over the shaft, over the hole, and press it onto the shaft. And yes, some grease is going to come out. Wipe that off. But now I'm going to take my thumb, hold that on, and I'm going to pull and push. And you'll notice it'll build up a lot of pressure on your thumb as you do this. And uh, you're likely to get a little bit of a hickey on your thumb if you do this right. And then... Wipe off the excess. I'm going to pull this off again. I'm going to wipe off the excess back here on the arm. I'm going to wipe off the excess from the back of the wheel. It's only the grease in the bearing that we're looking for. And then you might do that a couple times just to make sure that you're getting that bearing fully packed. Again, you're going to have people that will tell you, well, bearings don't need to be fully packed. Bearings should only be 70% packed or 50% packed. Um, with this bearing, because it's uh, it's pretty open and exposed, um, I like to just pack it completely. There we go. We are fully packed. With that, let's give it a spin. And you'll notice it, it spins well but then it's, it slows to a stop relatively quickly. And we'll clean off any exposed grease that's just gonna be a, a dust trap. We will put the fiber washer back on and then slide that E-clip back in place. Use a screwdriver to apply some pressure. And yes, that's really all there is to it. It's super easy, barely an inconvenience. So here's the thing. Shopsmith currently does not sell that bearing as a replacement part, but that bearing is readily available. It's about a 6 to $8 bearing times two. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to remove, but if you know how to press a bearing out, you can press the bearings out. It's really not a big problem. Um, Shopsmith now will only sell you a complete wheel with a tire with the bearings pressed in, and it's a hundred and some dollars to do that. So uh, you decide for yourself whether you want to replace those bearings or not. Um, but absolutely, there's no reason why you can't grease this yourself. All right, I'll link below to the things I used in this video and uh, look forward to your questions, comments, and cheap shots. And we'll do a midweek follow-up. Uh, and I look forward to responding to those questions. All right, make it a great week.